Throughout history, deserts have both challenged and inspired human progress. Along ancient trade routes, such as the Silk Road, caravans braved shifting sands to exchange goods, ideas, and culture. Even so, deserts remained a persistent threat, capable of swallowing entire cities and forcing populations to relocate in search of fertile land. In modern-day China, deserts still pose significant challenges, yet they have also become the focus of one of the most ambitious environmental transformations in recent history. Over the past few decades, China has undertaken large-scale projects to halt and even reverse the spread of its deserts. The Gobi and Taklamakan, once considered impenetrable and uncontrollable, have begun to shrink in certain areas due to reforestation programs and innovative water management. At the same time, China's rapid industrialization has placed unprecedented demands on resources like sand and water, sparking further concerns for sustainability. China's deserts comprise a significant portion of its northern and western territories. Historically, nomadic communities coexisted with these arid lands, adapting their lives to seasonal weather patterns. However, as the 20th century brought industrial expansion, pressures on the environment grew. By the 1970s, the Gobi Desert alone was encroaching southward at an alarming pace, threatening settlements and farmland. The Taklamakan Desert, famously nicknamed the Sea of Death, also expanded its dunes into once fertile margins. The Chinese government recognized the urgency of the problem in the late 1970s. By 1978, leaders unveiled a reforestation initiative known as the Three North Shelter Forest Program, also called the Grey Green Wall. Influenced by a smaller scale of forestation projects worldwide, policymakers envisioned a vast belt of trees stretching across multiple provinces. The ultimate goal was straightforward, stabilize the shifting sands and protect towns and cities from devastating sandstorms. At the time, Many experts questioned whether such a massive tree planting venture could succeed in regions known for harsh climates and minimal rainfall. Yet the commitment was unwavering. Public and private entities joined forces, marshalling thousands of volunteers and professionals to begin planting tree saplings. Early phases faced difficulties due to low survival rates, harsh winters, and limited irrigation infrastructure. Nevertheless, each obstacle provided lessons, and by the 1990s, tree survival rates had begun to improve. From 1978 until the mid-2000s, the Three North Shelter Forest Program expanded steadily. According to government reports, around 193,000 square miles of land had been afforested by 2009. The program set a long-term horizon, with a target completion date of 2050, indicating the nation's emphasis on persistence and sustained effort. Data released in 2022 suggests a remarkable milestone. The Gobi Desert, once growing by an estimated 3,800 square miles annually in the 1980s, has begun to contract. Researchers calculate it is now shrinking by about 770 square miles per year, a shift often attributed to tree planting, irrigation management, and better land use regulations. Concurrently, the frequency of sandstorms has shown a measurable decrease, offering relief to regions within China, as well as neighboring countries like Mongolia, North Korea, and South Korea. Local communities played a crucial role in these successes. Countless individual citizens, motivated by the prospect of safeguarding their homes, took part in planting and maintaining saplings. In one well-publicized example, a couple in Inner Mongolia reportedly spent four decades planting 74,000 acres of trees. Their dedication symbolizes a grassroots approach where ordinary people contribute to a monumental national objective. While the Gobi captures much of the media attention, the Takamakan Desert is equally significant, covering roughly 130,000 square miles. It is China's largest shifting sand desert. Desertification here was so extreme that farmers regularly witnessed dunes advancing onto cultivated plots and roads. In response, authorities launched the Green Belt Project, an extension of the Great Green Wall Principle, designed to surround the Takamakan with a vegetative buffer. This undertaking resulted in a 1,890-mile-long belt circling the desert. Planners introduced hardy plant species such as desert poplars, red willows, and drought-resistant shrubs capable of anchoring the soil. Implementation stretched across four decades, concluding major phases in 2022. By that point, approximately 1,715 miles of the belt had been established, with an additional 177 miles left to finish. Local economies benefited as some species planted in the green belt carried agricultural or medicinal value creating new revenue streams. However, maintaining these desert forests remains challenging, 
with irrigation systems and continuous monitoring essential to ensuring survival rates. China's leadership also prioritized building infrastructure in previously unreachable desert regions. This serves multiple functions, supporting natural resource extraction, improving transport efficiency, and connecting isolated communities. In the Taklamakan, engineers have constructed three major highways across the shifting sands. The oldest, completed in 1995, was primarily intended for oil field development but quickly opened to the public. Two additional highways followed in the ensuing years to meet growing travel and logistics needs. Each road presented formidable hurdles, especially regarding constant sand accumulation on the pavement. To combat encroaching dunes, China established a network of small irrigation stations at 2.5-mile intervals along the roads. These stations pump water to desert plants capable of stabilizing the sand. Additionally, workers use specialized nets and fences that slow shifting dunes. According to local highway authorities, annual maintenance can involve removing millions of tons of sand to keep lanes clear. Over time, these measures have dramatically improved road safety and usability. Similar challenges arose with the Lingtuan Railway, a 439-mile track running predominantly through remote desert land. High winds and sand buildup initially caused regular disruptions. To mitigate these issues, rail officials introduced sand barriers, planted vegetation around the tracks, and set up nine sand control centers for continuous monitoring. Within a year, an estimated 10,000 workers were mobilized and half a million dollars spent on track maintenance and vegetation projects. These proactive strategies highlight China's determination to sustain functional transport networks in harsh environments. Alongside reforestation and infrastructure, China has invested in large-scale renewable energy projects in its deserts. Perhaps the most visually striking example is the solar thermal power station near Dunhuang in the Gobi Desert. Its 12,000 mirrors track the sun and reflect concentrated light onto a central tower filled with molten salt. The salt's heat generates steam that drives turbines, producing up to 100,000 kilowatts per hour, enough, by certain estimates, to power 1,100 watt light bulbs simultaneously. Solar thermal stations offer an advantage over standard photovoltaic arrays, the molten salt retains heat for hours after sunset, creating a more stable and continuous power supply. Official data suggests this Dunhuang plant can deliver about 390 million kilowatt hours of electricity annually, displacing fossil fuels and reducing carbon emissions. Looking ahead, the success or failure of these initiatives carries implications beyond China's borders. Nations in Africa and the Middle East, facing similar desertification, often look to China's mixed experiences for inspiration and cautionary tales. As desertification threatens roughly 13 million square miles worldwide, efforts to curb its advance could shape future dialogues on climate adaptation, food security, and biodiversity. China's response to desertification is still unfolding. The Three North Shelter Forest Program, scheduled to run until 2050, shows that the country views its deserts as long-term, strategic concerns rather than short-term obstacles. Ongoing research into drought-resistant species, water-saving irrigation, and renewable energy may pave the way for new breakthroughs. A country once plagued by expanding deserts has proven that human determination can shape landscapes, often for the better. Yet these strides remain delicate, reliant on careful stewardship of resources and balanced economic strategies. Whether these efforts ultimately yield enduring ecological health or create further unintended consequences will hinge on the continuous refinement of technology policy, and public engagement.